Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today, I'm going to be spending a little time in the Silly Tavern, which is exactly as the name suggests, a virtual tavern that you can fill with your own AI characters. Hilarity generally ensues, especially with the right mix of personalities. Silly Tavern is a fork of Tavern AI with loads of extra features in it. It's essentially a front end for a variety of services, such as Ubabooga's text generation web interface via the API, of course, Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion, again via the API, text to speech APIs, and a whole bunch of other stuff all combined together. This means you can fill your tavern with multiple different AI characters that you've made or downloaded and have them speaking to each other along with the ability to both send and receive images. There is an absolutely ridiculous amount of stuff you can do with this interface from background images and colours, all that sort of thing, right up to world building as well, making it ideal for creating scenarios such as SCP conversations or perhaps just creating your own waifu. Given the number of features in this interface, I'm mostly going to focus on just getting the stuff you'll need for the full experience set up and running locally. After all, we don't want our private conversations going out over the intertubes now, do we? While I'm using just one computer with a single 24 gig GPU, the actual requirements will vary depending on what you want to do. As there are multiple services, you could easily just use one computer for text and another computer for stable diffusion, for example. In this video, I'm using just shy of 22 gig with everything enabled, but then I am using a 7B text model in BF16 mode, along with stable diffusion 1.5 on top. Obviously, if you use a much smaller language model in 8-bit mode and don't use stable diffusion as well, then you'll be able to greatly reduce the VRAM requirements. Generally speaking, however, to run any halfway decent language model, you're probably going to need at least 10 gig of VRAM. Now, do bear in mind, of course, that Silly Tavern itself is just a user interface and so doesn't require very much to run at all. You don't have to run locally either, as there are a variety of supported text engines, including Cobalt AI, the Text Gen Web UI that I'm going to be using, Novel AI, Open AI, and Poe. I'm going to be using Ubabooga, so if you're looking to get that installed, then I highly recommend using the manual installation method, as people do seem to have many issues with those one click installers. Of course, I've already done a video on installing this, so you could go and check that out now and then come back here if you don't have it installed yet. Just remember to start it with the minus minus API option, and when it runs, you'll see all the various addresses that will be used by the Silly Tavern. With the Uber Booga text interface up and running in API mode, the next thing to do is install the Silly Tavern user interface. Now, this didn't go quite as smoothly as usual for me, so your mileage may vary too. Obviously, these repositories do get updated a fair bit, and so expect things to change in the future. But this is what I had to do in order to get this working. Depending on if you're using Microsoft Windows or Linux, you'll have to do some slightly different steps to achieve exactly the same goal. I do like here how there's a little warning for those MS Windows users. Somehow seems appropriate. Anyway, if for whatever reason you haven't yet migrated away from Microsoft Windows, then do follow those instructions there as printed. So you'll need to install Node.js. There's a nice link there. You can open that up and then click on the thing, download and install that. Download the zip from the GitHub repo, unzip it into a folder of your choice, and then double click that start.bat thing, or run it in a command line. Personally, I'd completely avoid doing that zip part and just use a normal git clone. That way you can do a git pull in the future, rather than having to download the zip and unzip it again, but you do you boo. For Linux, they say just to run the start.sha, which unfortunately didn't work for me. However, this is what did work. First of all, obviously, git clone the repository and change directory into there and run the start.sha script as it says there. Now, for me, that seemed to work and, and it asked me to restart my shell. So I restarted my shell as instructed. But then when I ran it, it just gave me some errors. So rather than debug the script, 
I simply ran the npm and nvm install manually. As you can see here, I started off with sudo apt install npm and that went through and installed npm for me. That was very close. And when I ran the start.shirt again, it, it gave the same error. So this time I also ran nvm install 19.1.0 and nvm use 19.1.0. Now, when I run the start.shirt, it runs absolutely fine. Great. So now you've got the text generation backend running and the Silly Tavern interface available as well. It should start up something like this saying, welcome to the Silly Tavern. And there are also loads of useful links on there as well. Stuff about creating characters, where can I get help? But all we're interested in to start with, the two bits at the top in order to begin chatting. Number one, connect to one of the supported generation APIs. And then number two, pick a character. Okay, so you'll probably have a red plug at the top. So if you click on that, this is where you select the API. Of course, if you're running it locally like me and using the Uber web interface, there it is, you'll select that. And if you remember those API URLs from earlier, that is exactly what you want to put in there. Click connect, little connect button there, and you should see a nice green light. I here am using the MPT7B Story Writer. Apparently it's capable of an interestingly large context length, though I haven't fully tested it in the tavern as yet. Now you're almost ready to chat. All it says there is number two, select a character. So you can click on the character card up in the top right corner there. And as you can see, that provides some character management. You can add or upload characters here as well as create groups. As you can see, there are three default characters. So for now, I'm just gonna pick one. There's Darkness, hello Darkness, my old friend. You'll get a wealth of information about the character over on the right there. But for now, you can just click that character card again to make that disappear and start chatting. It says type a message down at the bottom there. So I'm going to do exactly that. Hello. Do I want something? Uh, yes, I do. Anyway, so there we go. It's working. You now have a new interface to your text generation program. Of course, the interface allows you to do lots of nice things. So for example, on the burger menu down there, you could convert that to a group chat. That's been converted to a group chat. And then you can see the current members and you can add extra members. So you could have those two extra characters in there as well. And then if you click the little speech bubbles, you can trigger a message from that character. So you could have them all in there just chatting to themselves. Another nice feature is the backgrounds, that little mountain icon up the top there. And I'm going to select a mountain as well. So I've got a nice background. Right, that's the very basics working. So let's move on to extending this a little bit more. Up the top there, you've got the three boxes. That's the extensions. And as you can see, there are a whole bunch of things there. The author's note, D&D &D dice, character expressions, background, TTS, image captioning, memory, and stable diffusion. In order to get all the extras, you'll need to install the Silly Tavern Extras. I did exactly what it says there. Locally, option one, using Anaconda. Install Anaconda or Miniconda. Uh, install Git if you haven't got it already, such as if you're using Microsoft Windows, and then just run those simple instructions. Exactly like it says there, execute these commands one by one in your Anaconda prompt. So there I am, conda create minus minus name. I've called mine silly extras because I'm good at names. There it is, that will get your environment going. So don't forget to activate it. Then you can git clone the silly tavern, change directory into the silly tavern, pip install minus r requirements.txt. That will get all your requirements installed for you. And then you can just start the server. Now, like it says there, I've started my server with all of the modules. So I've got captions, summarize, classify and stable diffusion. If you scroll down this page there, it gives you a list of all the available modules and all the available options. Now, one thing to note, of course, is that I started my stable diffusion remote port on 7861, just the same as the URL bar there, because obviously my Uber Booger interface is running on 7860. Do also note the first time you run that, it is going to download about five gig of stuff as well for that caption, summarize and classify stuff. For the text to speech, you do have the option of using your own built in system TTS, Solero or 11 Labs. I'm going to use Solero as it's kind of halfway between system and 11 Labs, but you don't require a subscription. Now you could do like it says here and create a new Anaconda environment or virtual environment 
for Solero, but personally, I just installed it straight into the Silly Extras one I made. Once again, you'll want to git clone the repository, change directory, and then pip install minus r requirements.txt. After all that, simply make the run.sh script executable, chmod plus x, and run it like I show there. Or if you're using Microsoft Windows, of course, you'll need to run the run.ps1 instead. The first time you run it, it will take a minute or two to start up, but eventually it will tell you it's running on your local system and give you the address. With the extras and Solero now up and running, you can pop back to the extensions in Silly Tavern and set up everything how you'd like. For example, we've got the stable diffusion thing down here at the bottom, all the usual things that you're used to, guidance scale, steps, width and height, all that sort of stuff. One thing I did do there was change the sampling method to Euler A because I'm like that. And you've also got generated prompt prefix and a negative prompt as well. For the TTS settings, let's open that up. You've got a number of providers there. Obviously, it's Solero. Let's click Enabled on that. Narrate dialogues only. And you can also do a voice map. So if you want each of your different characters in your tavern to have a different voice, that's absolutely fine. You can do that there. If you're not sure what the available voices are, just click the Available Voices button and you get a whole list of voices there. As you can see, they're all the way up to 117. Or you could pick random. You can just click Play on any of those to see what those example voices sound like. You'll likely also want to check out some of the other extensions as well, but for now, let's go back to chatting and do some images. Now the chat also has special commands, so if you do slash help, that'll give you some help text. As you can see, there are lots of different options for images. You can take a picture of you, you can take a picture of them, there's a scenario, selfie, all that sort of stuff. So let's do the selfie, SD, selfie. Oh, didn't she do well? What a lovely selfie. Now, if you want to send pictures, that's the little picture icon down the bottom there. I wonder what she'll make of this image. What do you think this means? I don't know. I'm not sure what it means, but we got to hear her voice. There's also a little bit of a slightly angry expression over on the left there as well. There are, as you have already seen, loads of other options up there as well, such as waifu mode. So I'd certainly suggest having a look at everything this interface has to offer. And if you're looking to still get that text generation web interface installed, then you could check out this video.